We've been working on fitting a Mercedes M120 V12 into this 190E, wrapped in a full custom body designed by Ash Thorpe and Carlos Pessino from Make Haste Corp. In the previous episodes, we 3D scanned the car, the engine, the transmission, and all the critical components, laying the foundation to design a full custom chassis built around Corvette Z06 suspension. In this episode, we're taking the next big step, bringing the body that Make Haste Corp designed from render to reality. We'll walk through everything it takes to turn a car designed on a computer into something you can actually build, from CAD and 3D printing to bonding panels and refining the final form. So with that said, let's get started. So right now we got all the body panels that they designed into Fusion, uh, and we're trying to create a workflow between how we could create all the design work that they've done and bring it into a printable and a usable file. We're incorporating flanges, mounting points. We have to create all the tabs and slots that will connect all the printed pieces together. Running into kind of issues, converting the file format that they've used into Fusion because they export it as a STL, usually known as like a poly mesh file. It kind of limits us on editing that file to be able to add and thicken and subtract the way that we wanted to. So we're kind of working around with the mesh editing software tools. Since it's not a CAD surface that we're working with, we would have to do some body work to kind of smooth some edges out, smooth some imperfections out here and there. But I think we got a good workflow going now. Yeah, so all the flanges that you see here along the bottom of the quarter panel, along the wheel well, and along the back side here, that's all been added after we got the files from uh, the guys to be able to, you know, create mounting points between the rockers and the mounting points for the inner wheel well. And then yeah, you see all the tabs and slot for each of the component so that, you know, we have the minimal amount of printing area and still have a way for it to be connected. Locates the two together and it kind of interlocks it so it can't really move out of place as much. We thin out all the mating surfaces to the sheet metal along, the, along all the top edges. Why did you thin out the surface to the sheet metal? Yeah, we thinned out the sheet metal so that when we cut away the actual body from the car, this piece would be bonded onto that little lip that's still left on the car. So it's more like a direct quarter panel replacement rather than like an over fender that you would see a building height or like, you know, have it, you know, bolted or riveted to the car. So that's why we thinned out all these mating points to the body. So if you see it like this, you could see that it's not a actual CAD surface, but it's more so like we're working with polygons that they designed. And with this too, you can see all the body lines in this new rendition that Make Haste created. So the orange is the original 190 scan, and this is the body panels that they've designed. So if I do like a little section view, yeah, look at that. That's that's how much significantly wider. Yeah, that's about like five inches wider. Yeah. Than the original body. Where the wheels sit relative to height, but also the width, we have to kind of inc incorporate all of that in creating our chassis. And then you can also see how much they're going to have to cut into the body of the actual car. Instead of the traditional four-door the 190 is, um, the guys that make haste made a two-door coupe. We're only keeping the greenhouse of the roof structure where the ABC pillars are and a little bit of the door structure at the front. But other than that, so all the original quarter panel, the rear door, even the rocker panel here, we're going to have to modify and chop because the rockers that they, that they designed sit much higher. This kind of helps us get a sense on what kind of modifications need to be made to the original car. We sliced everything uh, respective to how big our printers are. So all these different colors are different parts that we that needs to be printed. Even on this rear quarter, we have about like 15 pieces that we need to print just to make one rear quarter panel. We slice all the rear quarter panels, the bumper, the wing, and everything. Pretty much most of the body panels down, and we gotta start printing um, everything one by one. Um, so we try to maximize you know, whatever the print size is on the printers that we have. We have the H2S and then um, like a small X1 carbon that we got from Bamboo. But what's next is to start printing these body panels either in PLA or ABS. 
uh, just for it to be a placeholder. So all the printers will do the work from now on, you know, making sure everything is printed. The process of 3D printing all the body panels for this car has been a long one. Our printers have been running nonstop for months, day and night, turning digital surfaces into physical parts. This piece is one of 16 panels that makes up the driver's side quarter panel alone. Each piece takes an average of six and a half hours to print, which means this single panel required over a hundred hours of print time. And that's just one section of the car. In total, we'll be printing 161 individual pieces to complete the body. I just finished plastic welding a whole bunch of 3D printed pieces together. And this is the upper rear bumper for the 190E. This is what's referred to as a plug. And we're gonna pull a mold off of this and then with that mold, pull a composite piece, a carbon fiber piece from this. So to get things rolling with the project, we're gonna, we're making it all like this, mount it to the car, make sure everything is clearance properly. Going from a rendering to real life can sometimes you know, require slight modifications here and there. So far, we've been very, very lucky. The designers, Ash Thorpe and Carlos Color Sponge of Make Haste Corp, they designed an excellent car. Everything seems to be working out really well in the way that we don't actually have to modify anything from the rendering to make it a real car. So we printed out these pieces, what are they in? Uh, these pieces are just PLA, so very inexpensive. Plastic welds pretty nicely, and that's all it needs to be for its intention. Its purpose in life is literally just there to provide a shape, showcase clearance issues or mounting situations that we need to, to work our way through. And how many pieces are these? 11. You know how I know? Because Alex very cleverly labeled each and every one of them. So when it comes to me, the sequence of events for putting it together is pretty straightforward. Is what piece is that? The rocker panel. So a driver's side rocker. This right here actually represents the bottom of the door, kind of taking a lot of design cues from a CLK GTR, where the bottom edge of the door is about halfway down what is typical for a street car. So typical 190E, the door jam is probably down here. Uh, more race car stuff, is that cool? That's where we're gonna put the gas tank. You raid the gas tank down here, and next to the exhaust, Texas. <laughs> I think the guy was serious for like two seconds. It's like, wait a second. One traditional race car. This is an entirely new body for the 190E platform. Nice. We're developing like a driver's side door panel. So we're welding these panels together with uh, ABS glue, because it's ABS. And Steve is stapling them with a hot stapler. These panels, their purpose in life is to create the plug for us to take molds from. These are simply here to show us the shape, give us the shape that we can make a mold from, so we can make the real final, final product panel out of carbon fiber. This right here is the base of the A-pillar on the driver's side door. So you can kind of get a little sense of some of the shapes that we got going on here. So these doors on this project are kind of like a half size door. They're at the door sill is about halfway up from where the factory door was, taking inspiration from the CLK GTR. So this is where the A-pillar is. This right here is the, the beginning of the shape for the front fender flare, the, the extra width. Base of the A-pillar here, all the way back to where the door ends. So this is the top section, and these other pieces represent obviously the bottom section here. So we'll put all of this in line, and we'll put all of that in line, and then we'll click them both together. And then we can fit it onto the car itself, and you can see what that all looks like. 
Here's the back side of it, right? So, take this, yeah, they just fit together, just like that. Alice uh, put that little system together there, it's just so that when we go and put it together, everything aligns itself exactly as it should. There's no guessing. All Steve and I have to do is just make sure that the surface is flush the way it's supposed to be. In order to get this all done in carbon fiber, we have a lot of work. What we got here is the driver's side rocker panel. I'm in the process right now of doing all the seams and getting them all smoothed out. And what you see is the aftermath of me taking basically just a simple rotary tool and grinding out that groove in preparation for using a structural panel bond adhesive. This is the result that I'm going for. A little bit of sanding, the seam will completely disappear. And because it is structural panel bond adhesive, we know for sure that that's gonna be a good connection. This one right here is a good example of what it looks like after I've done all that work and then gone over it with a DA in preparation for like a high build epoxy primer. That's one of our go-tos. It'll bond really well to this. Give us a nice surface in which to block this out so that we can use these as a plug to pull a mold from. The end result is us making these all in carbon fiber. So right now, just 3D printed ABS, but they're gonna be carbon fiber in the end. Wonder if anybody out there looking can tell what this piece is. Is that a door? Oh, you gave it away. <laughs> gave it away. This this is the this is the passenger, the passenger upper door. Um, in this project, we've cut the vertical height of the door down you want to and to made it considerably shorter. So this is where the window sill is going up into the frame, and this is the bottom of the door. The idea behind that was to make it much more reminiscent um, as to like the Mercedes CLK GTR. So this is what this is. We have some special ideas on how this door is gonna hinge. This is kinda a little bit of a hint how that's gonna do that. Um, you'll have to stay tuned and see how that comes together. But right now, it's all about bodywork in preparation to get it attached to the car. Right off the printer, it's nice and slick, it looks cool, but it's not very good for adhesion, for any kind of glue, panel bond, anything like that. So what I'm gonna do, I got a little bit of 80 grit on my DA as well as my hand block. And I gotta scratch the surface up. So, put a nice 80 grit surface on that. And then of course, inside that little groove, I just simply use this rotary tool, right? Give you So the intention is obviously just to create a little groove. Put an 80 grit surface scratch inside that groove. Make sure that our adhesive sticks to it. So that's the, that's the story that I've done for each and every one of these things. If you look real close in here, sometimes you'll see these little wavy sort of lines here and that is those are like little hot staples it's like a plastic welding gun and we embedded those little hot staples inside the plastic during the process of bringing all the panels to uh, bonded together and it holds that in place really good it's kind of like a quick fix and then of course because it's metal and you know inside the plastic now that's a nice strong spot but that's just serving, serving like, a, like a quick placeholder for allowing the panel bond, which is like the chemical adhesive to do its job. Because it takes, this particular one takes about four hours to dry. So it's nice for me because I don't have to stress too much in the process of putting it together. It's not like, you know, instant CA glue where it bonds instantly and 
usually your fingers get attached to it too. This one gives me a little bit of, little bit of wiggle room and it works really, really good. So those hot staples kind of place hold it while the panel bond is doing its job. Um, helps us to align these things just in case there's any kind of misalignment at all. I mean, it is 3D printed, so there is kind of like a little bit here and there. It fluctuates just a little tiny bit. Not a lot. Not enough to worry about in this situation, but just more of the same, you know. After it's panel bond, after it's dried, then I'm just going to go over the surf. A lot of that to make sure that it's as flat as it can be at this stage. So when we do the, the, the high build epoxy primer and then start blocking it out, we're already like 90% of the way there. All the seams been glued and stapled from the backside with the heat stapler. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's super rigid. ABS is really good for heat stability and all that, so that's really good. It makes an excellent piece or an excellent material for pulling molds from for, you know, handling the, the exothermic reaction of composites. Oof. Right, big word. This area right here is in behind the front tire. Imagine the front tire right here. This area right here becomes the new sort of footwell. And this area right here is about nine inches farther back in the footwell from the sheet metal of the floor than what was factory in the 190. We're still cutting that area out on the car, so I can't really show you exactly what that is, but it's about nine inches. That is more of what we got here with the door. And that's going to be the same story over and over and over again for every single panel on this car. Because essentially, the whole exterior of the car is going to be brand new. Except for the roof. The roof which we're going to redo and composite anyways. So the whole car is going to be carbon? The whole car you could basically say is carbon. Except for you know the floor pan and say the main skeleton of the greenhouse of the car um, all the composite panels will be attached to those we'll be using panel bond to attach all these composite pieces to it um, that's it yeah otherwise i mean it should be a very lightweight car we're estimating sub 2500 pounds motor is a six liter v12 so it's the m120 uh, we're not really going to do anything to it other than put ITBs on it. So we reached out to Wesley Kagan and we got one of his ITB setups that he developed. I'm really stoked about that. He uses Gen B throttle bodies, his own intake runners. Um, Goichi. We're using Haltech mm -hmm. for the ECU on this. So that will control all of that. We reached out to Goichi for a bunch of their other M120 engine pieces like soft plates and a whole bunch of other little things sort of to get rid of all the unnecessary and just keep it super rough. That's all gonna be in front of a 2013 M3 DCT Trans, the beefy boy, the M spec one. And the final drive is a differential out of a 1LE Camaro, independent rear, and it's going to Corvette C6 uprights and all the suspension arms and everything from a C6. We found a set of four calipers from a Cayenne. They're really, really nice. And we're working on developing an adapter package to mount those to the C6 uprights. So those are gonna look really good on there. They're gonna be way more than enough brakes. Again, like 2,500 pounds-ish for a car. That is super, super raw. About 500 horsepower from the M120. We accomplished a lot in this episode, taking the body our friends at Make His Corp designed and bringing it from render to reality. There's still a lot more printing ahead and in the next episode, we'll start test fitting these panels onto the car and seeing how everything comes together in the real world. So make sure you're subscribed and we'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.